Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nilesh Adalgi and you are watching Techie Programma. In this video, we are going to understand how to work with SQLite 3 database in Python. So let's have a look at the agenda of today's video. So let's start with what is database. Then let us understand how to create and connect the database. And then we'll understand how to insert the data into the database. And then fetching the data wherein we will be learning the like and where clause. And then we will be understanding update and delete. So then later on, we'll be uh, reviewing the application and which is built using SQLite 3 and the Tkinter. Uh, the UI is ugly, but it, the working is amazing. You can just have a look at that at the end of the video. And finally, I will be telling you how you can uh, raise your knowledge on this particular subject that is SQL and how you can study or how you can Google search your queries. So let's start. Before we start, here is a quick note for you. What you need to do is uh, we are going like, this is the Python code or whatever we are will be describing in this tutorial. So what I'm doing here is I will be uploading a copy of this on my GitHub account. So you can just access that by going to GitHub. Like you can just follow this link here. I will be providing this link in the description of this video. And if you do not have a Git account, you can just create one. And uh, what you can do is in order to get these notes, just fire up your any of the browser and just paste the link, hit enter. And then here you can see click on code and just download it as zip. You can just open that zip and you will find all the files. So basically it's a Python file right here. So what we will be doing is as, as we are going to go with this, I'll be adding all the data like how we do and proceed with database and SQL queries. So you can just uh, refer that as a reference. And if you want this in a PDF section, I mean in the PDF format, even the link for that I will be providing in the description itself. So you can just have a look for any of whatever is comfortable with for you. So let's start. So basically I said we are going to start with what is database. So I will not be defining this whole lot but uh, if you want to read you can read this but database is a kind of a table which stores the data you can just say you have a column name and then the rows which stores a particular set of data and then uh, sql sql is nothing but a language which helps you to fetch the data and insert update etc with the database so for more we can just read this now let's start so let's create and connect to database and create a table in it so let's start first of all we need to import a sqlite 3 library that comes built in with python package so we just do it by saying import sqlite 3 and then in order to create or connect to the database what we do is create a variable called connect then say sqlite 3 dot connect then we pass the database name so you can just pass anything let me just say test dot database so i will be using or creating this database and if it is already present then it just uses that or else what it does is just creates a database in that particular folder so I have already created here, so it just shows here. If you do not have it, don't, no worries, it will automatically create a file for that. So the next, what we will be doing is, this is now connected. So what I will do is just to check, I'll just close this connection and run. So you can see it just finished with code zero. So now what we will be doing is, uh, we have called successfully connected and let's create a table in it. So in order to create a table, first of all, we will be requiring a SQL query. So basically, as I said, SQL query is nothing but a language which helps you to interact with database. So let's make a variable called SQL underscore QRY. I'll be using this as my variable for all the upcoming queries. So in order to create a table, a table is basically, uh, it has a columns and rows and column is kind of specific category and rows are uh, different types of data or inputs. So let's create a table. So let me just say, in order to create a table, we'll write a query as 
create all caps make sure the sql is kind of weird whatever the like code we write in sql we write it in capital and whatever we are concerned with like whatever the object we are concerned with you can just write it in capitals or small letter but it's a case sensitive case so make sure you work perfectly with that and then let me say create table as i want to say create a table then i will write a name for my table so just say uh, i want a table called users and then uh, it will have it will be having the first name so let me just say the first name and then we write uh, data data type so here we have the data type so let me make sure you understand the data types so let me just go down here and create a comment so there are basically five data types and let me just quickly type that so we have five types of data types in SQL. One is null, integer, real, text, and blob. So null is something like empty, and integer, as it says, integers are numbers. Real is a decimal value. You can just go with 3.14, a pi value of pi. And then text is a string. You can just go with a random string. And then blob, blob uh, is like, for example, if you're going to store an image in your database, then the blob comes into the picture images or other audio files etc so so i hope this was clear these are the data types so these are five data types so you can just use any of these here now that we have perfectly understood the data types in sqlite 3 what we will be doing is just try to apply that so i know that first name is going to be a text so i will just say it has text then a call comma and then uh, I'm going to store the last name of the, the user. So I'll just say last underscore name and that is going to be text again. And then I'm going to store the age. So I'll just say age. Age is going to be an integer. So I'll just say I-N-T-E-G-E-R. So this is going to be an integer. So my SQL query is now ready. I need to execute this. So executing is nothing but just applying on the database. So in order to execute, we need a cursor object and we can create that using saying that cur is a variable and then you can just say connection dot cursor. So this creates your cursor object and now you can execute. So you can just say cursor dot execute and then your SQL query. So SQL query is SQL underscore query. Okay. And then once the this applies the change on your database, and if you want to make it uh, like true, that the changes should be true or it should imply on the database for permanent, then you need to make it a commit. So you can do it commit. I mean, you just do, you have to commit on your database. So in order to make a commit, what you can do is you can just say connection dot commit. So let's go down, down. So let's check. Then at the finally, we have just, we are just going to close this connection. Let me just run this so here you can see it just says it has finished and let me just retry to rerun this and now it says the table users already exist so it means that uh, you have successfully created a table which has first name last name and age and then this is the text text and integer are those data types so we have successfully created connected and created a table with these columns so let's move on to the next. Now that we have created the database, let's start adding data to it. So we call it as inserting data. Let's start inserting the data. So in order to insert data, what we can do is, I will just paste this code here, the previous one. And what we're going to do is write a SQL query in order to insert the data. So rest of the thing, things remain same. That is, we are going to connect, then write a SQL query, then uh, make a cursor then execute that cursor then commit it and close the connection so we do not require to every time or every single time to create a connection and uh, create a cursor or and close but i want to make it clear and make you understand a uh, query by line by line so what i'm doing here is i'm just trying to make it separate so now uh, i need to write a query for inserting the data 
So in order to insert the data, what we do is let me just try to insert a single entry. So let me say insert into. So what we are going to do is we are going to insert into the table name that is users and then what we are going to insert is the values so v a l u e s and then parenthesis so here we are going to pass our values for example we have if we want the name to be techie so i will just write as techie and if i want the last name to be programmer i'll just write e r o o g r a and then e r and then if i want the age to be 20 i will just give it 20. so now what i've done is connected to the database then we have made a sql query that inserts the value and then we have the connection so a cursor then we are executing the, using the cursor then we are committing and then we are closing the connection so now let me just try to run this Forward sql live three so let me just run this here okay so it just runs let me now we, now that we have inserted the data we will be going to read but before reading i want to show you this is the way we add the data in uh, i mean like one entry if you want to add a multiple entry like you have a list and if you want to add the complete list what you can do is make a list or just say multi list which we are going to add to our database then say just create a list and then create a tuple of list so for example if i want the name to be jhon the last name to be rock and if the age should be 80 then let's create a new person that is let's say so we have the list of three now what changes here is we are going to change this execute to execute many so it's something like execute many and then uh, we are going to replace this with question marks okay so now here i'm going to pass my list that is multi list so now what happens i mean we are t multi list okay so now let me just run this and here you can see it just runs successfully but we are not yet sure that this particular stuff has been added to the database so let's check out this is the way we go, we added a single query and multiple like single record on the multiple records into the database so now let's move on for fetching the data so now that we know we have certain data in our database let's try to fetch that let's start with the ptch and we fetching fetching and showing all so first of all let me again do that the same thing let me just copy paste the code so now that we have import connection cursor etc now we require a sql query here in order to fetch the data so let's say i want to fetch everything like whatever is present in my database so what i'll do is tuple quotes S-E-L-E-C-U-T select everything stand for this you can just add a star which stands for everything select everything from from the database database is users then what I'll do is just come down and just this to execute and fetch all so basically what it does is this query runs and fetches like gets all the entries and then we are going to fetch all the data from that particular query so then uh, once this is fetches all i want this to be stored in to a variable called records okay 
then uh, once everything is stored into the records let me just print down records so let me just run this so here you can see yeah I have the first entry the second the third the fourth okay so this is how we select everything in this way and in this method what we did is we fetch all but we can do there are other two parameters like two other ways to do this is fetch one fetch many so basically let me just write it here FETCH one stands for fetch the first one whatever your conditions you apply for example in this case it would be this one and when I would say FET fetch many it would take a parameter one or two which would indicate the number of entries that you want to return so this is how the fetch all fetch one and fetch many work and this is how we select everything from this particular uh, database so let's understand the primary id so primary id is unique for all the entries so let me just show you so here we have this content here so the primary id is like specific like it's unique to every entry here so let's try to access the primary id here. in order to access the primary id what you need to do is just add your row id and a comma and then what we will do here is let me just try to print this so now you can see here it's one here it's two and here it's three it's four so this is what row id or primary id key is now that we have understood how we can access the primary id let's move on to where clause so what is where these are kind of conditions that we apply on the query so that we get a uh, like limited or what we require type of output so now let us try to go with a where clause just it remains rest of the things remains same like import sql this all and then we say like select everything from users where where now we pass um like for example this is the row id this is the name last name and age so where let me say if i want to access the content of where the name is uh techie so we have we named it as first name so f i r s t underscore n a m e and then i say equals first name equals and then uh, it's a string so i'll just pass it as a string that is techie t e c h i e so let's run this so here you can see i have got this as an output so this is this with this with the help of this i was able to access this so if i would say uh, if the name is sorry where the age is 20 age is 20 okay so yeah yeah because it's a number so now you can see there are two entries whose names are like whose age is 2020 so i get these two outputs you can use string formatting here uh, wherein you can just pair this for example if i want to say past 20 here what i could do here is just say dot format and then pass 20 so this is how we pass using python formatting so you can see it like returns the same result here so with the help of this you were able to go for this that is learn the where clause once we understand the where clause let's move on to understand the like like is kind of regular expression thing wherein if you have familiar if you are familiar with regular expressions in python then you might be like you search for this add then this so something like that so you try to find a regular expression in that particular this so in the same way we can do that here for example if i want to search uh, for a name which starts at th something like that so what i would say is select everything from the table name that is users where wh 
E R E where first name if I R S T underscore name is like it's like techie T E and I don't remember the rest of the name. So what I would do is I would just go for a percentage sign and I need to pass this in single quotes because this is a text so let me just run this so here you can see uh, where it starts as te and so here we have te so we just like we're searching for like type like terms something like that so we were able to fetch the like so we, this is where we use where clause and this is how we use the like so now we are familiar with how to use where how to apply conditions on the statement while querying the object and you can just see here you can use fetch all fetch many to limit your number of returns so after understanding this let's move on to so now let's understand uh, what is ordering by or what we do here is uh, we fetch particular data and then we order by some order like for example ascending or descending something like that so let me just edit the query the rest of the things remains the same so let me just run this okay so here you can see this is how it looks so let me just add uh, other another variable called row id which fetches the row id of the table and then let me say row id and everything from user table and then i want to order it by the row id let me just say like o r d e r then space by and then i say what particular stuff i want to manage by like row id i want to I'm arrange it by using row id so just i say row order by row id now you can see here it's one two three four and you can even order by name you can order by this age whatever you can just order by anything and you can just add an uh, another parameter here wherein you can just add asc for ascending and d e s c for descending let me just show you for ascending first so this is ascending uh, it remains as it is and then for descending it should reverse so you can see four three two and one basically what it does is whatever is the output of this query then based on that it orders by then depending on what parameter you ask to do so for example ascending or descending and if it is an alphabet like in the numerator numericals you can just say like our numbers can be written in ascending and descending order with the alphabets uh, it just go with ascending it goes with a to z and descending goes from z to a so something like that so now we have understood how to order by now let us understand and and or so in this we can even and and or operation we can apply and and or operations uh, it is something like if two things are true just do that stuff and if the one thing is true do that stuff something like that uh, if we are familiar with coding experience then you might be knowing how to use and and or operators so let me just uh, give you an example for that so let's say select everything from users where where last name is like programmer and mm, let me say row id is one so let me what i will do is let me just go here and add row id so let me just run this so here you can see it fetches me something that has a last name starting with pro and whose id is one what if i go with and sorry or huh, it returns the same because one of the condition is true let me just say if the row id is three yep here you can see yeah here you can see it tries to satisfy one of the condition uh, or is something like either this or this so here you can see it satisfies the first condition that is pro and fails for the second so it just brings it off because it's an or operation and coming to this uh, what do you say row id it has one but this condition this particular entry satisfies this particular condition that is row id is three so let me go with uh, 
and operation for this same. Then let me run this. It returns me zero, I mean empty set because here you can see it, the condition should be satisfied. That is, it should have the last name starting with PRO and should have through IDS3 and there is no such entry in the whole database or whole table. So this is how AND and OR operation works. So now let us understand how to limit our searches. So in order to limit, uh, what we do is, like for example, if I want to say that uh, select everything from users, then I do not want to fetch all the content of the table. For now it's four, but uh, the real data wouldn't be four or 10. It would be in hundreds and you want to limit your search to maybe 400 or 10 or maybe five, one, whatever. So what you can do is you can just add something like limit and then say your limit. That is, for example, if I say five, it will be five, but I do not have five data. So I will just go with two and then run. So now you can see it has limited my axis to two. So this is how this limit works. You just need to say limit and then pass a number. So now let's try to understand how we can update the data in our table. So in order to update, what we will do is let me just remove the square here and then type in order to update, we type update and let's say I want to update this age 20 to 21 maybe. So what I will do is update then the table name that is the users and then what I'm going to do is set the age equals 21 where the first name equals techie. So what does this mean is uh, update uh, age equals to 21 where the first name is techie. So it should update this stuff. So let me just run this. It's show like it shows that it has successfully run. What I will do is I will just cut this and write S E L D C T star from users and let me just print that. And here you can see the age is updated to 21. So what actually happening here is when I save it this, like let me just paste this here. Here you can see we are saying to update with the table name. Then we are going to set whatever parameter we want to set or update the parameters, whatever the variable I want to update. Then that particular name. Then what is the value that I need to update? You can use a variable using a dot format as explained earlier. And then you can add a few conditions with where first name is this or where first name is like or something like that. So make sure you have this here connection.commit because as you are working and affecting the rows in the table, you need to make sure you commit that. So this is how the update works. And you can just run particular one set of update on multiple number of rows or multiple, you can affect multiple rows on the table. So moving on, uh, let's try to delete an entry from that particular stuff or particular table. So in order to delete, what we will do is, let me say command X and let me write delete. In order to delete, I type just delete the E L E T E. Then from the table name that is users, where let me say if I want to delete this at particular I guess let me just delete this one last query here so what I say delete from users where first name var underscore name equals raj it's a string so let me put it in the single quote and now let me run this it just runs successfully. Now what I will do is I will just cut this, paste it down as a comment so that you can have a look for that. And then let me just say 
select everything from users and let me just print this so now you can see here only i have three entries making sure that the particular this raj entry is disappeared or is deleted so this is how we update and delete and lastly let's talk about dropping the table in case uh, you might be creating a temporary table or triggering a temporary table and later on at the end if you want to make it fall then what we can do is here uh, let's say if i want to delete this users table from this particular set then what i will do is just write drop stands for destroying drop then the table I'm going to destroy the table so drop table then the name so using this line what I will be doing is I will be destroying my table with all the entries and it will be just deleted from the whole sort of thing so I hope this all the stuff were clear to you we started with creating the database creating the table then data types then inserting the record how to insert many, many number of records then querying and fetching what is primary id how to use where clause how to use ampersand sorry the percentage symbol in order to go for a generalization and then when we use dot execute how to create a cursor then commit the like commit the query and then moving on to how to update and delete how to use the uh, logical operations and and or limiting our results ordering by etc etc and finally we are going to drop our table uh, making sure that we understood everything successfully then we just hit run so that it will destroy our table for this session so bam so we are already done with this tutorial as as i said we i will be telling you about or showing you an walkthrough to my application that i had built which had of course an ugly interface but still you can just look around how the data is managed let me just show you let me just close this project here okay this one and i'm going to main and let me run this so it just says it's indexing let me wait for a while okay let me just hit run so this is what i have built this is a little quit button at the bottom you can just quit that application here and you need to enter the username i have made it as my name okay and then when you hit login it comes to this particular section here and then what i will do is uh, let me just show all the products so these are the products i added before when i was trial doing a trial and error on my application so this is how these are the products and i can have this home button here okay then i have a add product here update or delete product let me just go and let me just see here uh, it says that i have 197 iphone 7s okay that's just a joke but so we can consider for an example so let me say well uh, one product quantity is 197 and i have the product id as 150 and the product cost is 49,000. let me just go home i just forgot it's 150 okay go back update or delete product so the product id 150 search for that here i have the product id as 150 the name of the product number of quantities the cost okay so what i can do here is i can just update in the sense what i can do is if the cost has been increased let me say 49,999 I can hit update so you can see the product updated successfully this all stuff is done using SQLite 3 in the backend then let me hit just home then let me go for add product let me just show you adding a product let me say 121 is a product ID and the name of the product is keyboard and let me say the number of quantities are 100 and does cost something around 3000 okay it says this product already exists updating okay the product id already exists let me say 151 add product it says the product added successfully hitting back 
then what I will do is I have shown you these three. Let me go to makeup bill. Then as a customer arrives, you just say this, this are the products. So you know the product ID because those are pasted on your product. So let me say 151 is a product. So I will just add to cart. So here I have a little beautiful add to cart menu. So here you can see this is what I have. So then what I can do is uh, let me add an iPhone 7. Okay, so here I can see the product ID, the product name, the number of product quantity and the cost. Let me just say uh, if the user buys another iPhone 7. So here you can see it increases by one again. So this all stuff is handled by SQLite 3, which I just told you right now, or the course, course of tutorial, whatever it was. So the same basic principles are used here. And then what I will do here is you can just even remove the product here. Let me just say if I remove this, you can see the iPhone was removed from the card. So everything is done on SQLite 3 itself. Then you can see, let me just do this. Then let me say print bill. It just sum ups. And when you say payment done, the data is erased. And then you can see here, uh, already I had 197, two iPhones were sold, so 195. And then I guess one keyboard was sold with Yep, one keyboard was sold, so it has 100, so now it is now 99. So let me just show you, let me just go here, and this is the quit option here, to quit. Then coming here, um, I can just make you go through the score. This is around, I guess, uh, 248 lines of code. Uh, this is mainly about UI, how the things are arranged. Uh, I was bored. So I do not color the whole thing into stuff. I would just, I just wanted to learn and make myself perfect in SQLite 3. So I just made this and then I'm going to the product and this is the database.py file where I managed all my queries. So you can see select password from admin where username is this. So here you can see, here you can see the fetch all, whatever we have learned, the same things are applied um, in the functions. So here you can see whatever you were getting the output as the product don't exist, etc., etc. So here you can see uh, we have used formatting of string on update products. So this is again 171 line of code. So this is uh, these are the major two files. One is the database file, and another is this uh, the main UI file. The rest of the things I just made for testing my queries. And this is my market supermarket.db the database file so this is how or this is how my application looks i hope that you are really inspired with this application i know the ui is a little bit ugly but i hope the functionality is really beautiful now that we have understood uh, how to code the stuff let's try to understand how we can learn more on this particular topic so first of all mm -hmm. I have the recommendations for you. Let me just go with first. This is SQLite 3 from tutorials point. You can just visit this link https://tutorialspoint.com uh, slash SQLite then index.htm. So here there are there is again a text based in, uh, like explanation. Here you can see we have covered almost everything but still there are a few things that you can understand here like glob group by having clause distinct keyword again and for advanced SQLite you even have this here stuff and for interfacing etc so you can just go through here and if you want to learn this is for SQLite 3 SQLite okay and here I have from W3 schools wherein you can understand how to phrase your SQL statements here we have this many number of features here like here we have joints union group by etc and the top one we have already covered update the insert so you can either go with this or go with this so these are my two recommendations in order to understand or raise your knowledge on SQLite so that's it for today see you in the next video I hope you really enjoyed this whole tutorial and if you have any suggestions do make sure you comment down so that it gives me an idea on what to bring for you so let me know uh, do you like 
my videos in the short cut cut formats i mean uh, 10 minutes 10 minutes of video or you would admire to me get a complete one hour tutorial something like that let me know in the comment section please do like share and subscribe and that's it for today once again see you in the next video and bye